In the last section, we saw that antiderivatives ended up being a unbelievably crucial part of computing definite integrals. And we summarized that in what we uh, saw was called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. This amazing link between finding area under a curve and conducting an antiderivative. So what we want to start off this particular section with is um, introducing some formal notation for how we would uh, want to say that we're going to find the most general antiderivative of a function. And since we now have this link between definite integrals and antiderivatives, we introduce the following definition. We'll say that we will use an indefinite integral of a function f, which we will write as the following. We'll write it here with this integral symbol, as well as f of x dx. And that will be used to indicate the most general antiderivative of f. So notice it's the same notation that we would use for a definite integral, but now we've just removed the bounds. So let's take a look at example one to kind of see um, the differences again between what we're calling then a definite integral and an indefinite integral. So let's take a look here. Notice on part A, I'm being asked to find an integral of x squared. But again, this is indefinite because it has no bounds. And so whenever I see this integral symbol with no bounds, I should just automatically interpret that as saying, please find the antiderivative of x squared. So in this case, this would be unbelievably simple to work with. If I want an antiderivative of that function, I know that I can just say, raise the power by 1 divide by the new power. And then, of course, to make it as general as possible, I add plus c. So an indefinite integral here, super easy to calculate. I'm just looking for an antiderivative. Now, if I compare and contrast that with part b, notice here that I'm getting a definite integral, which is now asking a question about an area under a curve. And so I would have to go ahead and say that first, we note that f of x equals x squared is continuous on the interval from 0 to 3. So I know that I can use fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to evaluate this. So I can now state that this integral here, this definite integral, is going to be equal to 1 third x to the third. And remember, I'll just evaluate that from 0 to 3. So I'm going to get 1 third times a 3 to the third power minus a 1 third times 0 to the third power. So this is going to be 27 over 3, which is 9, and 9 minus 0. And so here I get a final answer of 9. So as I state down here in the note, it is very important to see that an indefinite integral is going to represent a function, or rather what we would call a family of functions, since there are a bunch of functions that all look the same, maybe with just different constants at the end. Whereas a definite integral is going to ultimately result in a single final value, since it represents an area under a curve.